now. Hello, this is Billy Cor from Carolina Circle Mall. Welcome back to Nostalgia Christmas 2017. And um, we're here with the Packard Bell Multimedia D132, um, aka the Corner Packard Bell. This has pretty much become one of my most prized possessions due to its um, rarity. It's just um, something you don't come across every day. And this is one that I would never ever get rid of um, unless I had the um, the uh, option of trading this for one of those all-in-one Packard Bell Spectrias. Those are really, 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 really nice, but unfortunately just about as rare if not more rare than this um, Corner Packard Bell, but anyway, um, the purpose of this video is to show um, how to um, get inside one of these and to show you what's inside this particular computer. So um, let's go around. As you can see, it's a triangular shape designed to fit in a corner. Maybe not the best, but it works, um, I think. <laughs> so um, let's uh, get the camera up on the tripod and I'll show you what to do. Okay, first thing you want to do is remove this um, gray centerpiece where the monitor sits. Um, of course, a lot of these corner Packard bells no longer have this piece, so um, if you don't have it, just ignore this part. It slides right off, don't need any tools or anything. And, um, of course, you can use this just fine without the um, monitor stand. You can just set your monitor right here. Because you even got a little face of technology right there. If you, um, if you're if you care, I don't think you do. But <laughs> all right, next thing. Um, this this was a little tricky at first when I first got this back in June. But um, before you can um, take the screws out of the back, you have to remove these two panels right here. And all you have to do there's just two tabs on the bottom. Uh, just two tabs right under here. Just um, push them in and it pops right off. Same thing um, with this one where the uh, floppy drive is. Although um, with this one you want to be a little bit careful with it because um, there are some wires attached for the um, reset switch and the LEDs right here so um, you don't want to yank it off and um, break your cables. And there you go. Again, there's the circuit board there. Alright, now we can start removing um, the actual casing. Oops, sorry. Just uh, pick it up, flip it around. Of course, keep in mind this is still dangling there. And um, here's the back. Uh, as you can see, this was manufactured on um, November the 13th of 1996, making this 21 years old. Anyway, there are two screws um, that you need to remove. One here and one here. Although, um, I've already removed the screws off camera, so all we have to do is just um, lift this up. Just a little bit of prying. And here we go. And we are in. And now we can start taking a look inside. Okay, um, here's the inside of it. This particular um, corner Packard Bell has the um, PB640 motherboard. Um, there were uh, two variations of this board. Um, one was socket 5 and the other was socket 7. I believe this is the socket 7 version, but don't let that fool you because um, from what I understand, this motherboard's a little bit picky about processors. Um, you may think you could put an MMX in here, but I think it's a little bit picky about that. But I think you can put a um, AMD K62 in here. One of the slower ones, at least. So, yeah, and um, this particular one is a 166 megahertz Pentium. 
and I have no plans of um, replacing the CPU in here. It's no need to. We got a coast module here. Um, this was not factory added. This one is from a compact, I believe. The um, Cirrus Logic video chip there, 5440. And Packard Bells in the mid 90s um, typically um, came with one megabyte of video RAM. But what makes this um, Packard Bell kind of unique is that. Um, the um, video RAM in this, um, it, while it originally came with one megabyte, this one has been upgraded to two megabytes. You see these um, Packard Bell motherboards had um, little um, slots here where you could add more video RAM, and this one has them populated. So this gives it two megabytes. Um, this is um, rare to find. And of course you got your Packard Bell sound modem card. I've got a compact flash card slot right here in place of the hard drive, a um, Netgear um, Ethernet card, again obviously added by me, a proprietary sized um, baby AT um, power supply. I um, dread the day this goes out because this would probably be hard to replace. Um, Got the CD-ROM drive here, and it's supposed to go in a little uh, sled, but I don't have that, so we're having to use uh, other means to keep it in place, and it works well enough. Of course, you got your floppy drive, um, and right under the floppy drive is where the hard drive's supposed to go, but again, I'm using a compact flash card instead of the hard drive, so that is currently empty. And we got a fan right there. So yeah, um, very, very, very interesting case design right here. So let's go ahead and put it back together, shall we? All right, let's um, put it back together. Um, first, I want to make sure the CD-ROM drive is um, in a good spot. So again, I don't have the little drive tray for this. So I'm going to compromise there. Okay, I guess it's good enough. Alright, we'll just start by uh, putting the top back on. Again, I'm such an honor to have such a rare piece of computer history right here. Especially it being a Packard Bell. And I'm a little bit biased, obviously. <laughs> All right, we'll go ahead and put our screws back in. Okay. Put the other one in. You would think this used three screws, one here, one here, one here, and one here, but there is no screw right here, so it's kind of silly, but it works. <laughs> but this is a silly case anyway. And what I like about this case is that it's just, it's just really um, unique compared to the other computer designs of its time. It really, really stands out. And of course, most Packard Bells from the mid-90s really stood out compared to um, its competitors at the time. Okay, screws are in. Let's uh, turn it back around. Put the um, little panels back, back in place. really like to get the um, drive rails for the CD-ROM someday, but considering the rarity of a computer like this, um, that probably won't happen anytime soon. So I just got to slide the drive into this faceplate in a way that makes sense, and just 
sure it's lined up. And pop it in and see if we can get the CD-ROM in a good place. There we go. And of course the um, other face plate here. Like the other one, just slide the bottom in here. And there, there we go. And the piece of resistance will just slide the uh, monitor stand back into place. And voila, it's back together. So that's how you um, take apart one of these, put it back together, and um, what is actually inside one of these. So, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. This is Billy Core signing off. Thank you for watching my video. If you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The addresses are located at the bottom. Until next time, this is Billy Core wishing you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.